Hey, I wonder if they really might be on to something. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam. I've been living with multiple sclerosis for over 39 years. And in this channel, I've talked recently about some scientific developments, new possible therapies that might actually not only reduce symptoms, because I think we have quite a few medications that do that, but might get to the heart of MS and what's going on at the cellular level, what is being called smoldering MS, which becomes more apparent in the progressive stages, but it could be argued that it's always there. So it means that if we could nip it in the bud, we could actually cure multiple sclerosis. Now that is just too exciting to be blasé about, even though, yes, I'm gonna remain a little bit cautious and a little bit skeptical. But, you know, I have to be hopeful. Something's bound to be the breakthrough, and who knows, maybe this will be. I did a video last time on KY101 coming out of Kyverna that it was just being fast-tracked for clinical trials, and it's something um, called CAR T-cell therapy. And you may have been hearing about that. It's basically similar to stem cell transplant in that it is going to reform or reset the immune system and therefore get rid of all the activity associated with multiple sclerosis or at least that's what they're hoping but they're just starting their trials and just the other day i came upon an article that was just published in nature describing these trials in a little more detail from a little different angle and since it's in Nature, which is, of course, a highly reputable journal, I thought I would share it and we can look at it together. I don't normally do two videos on the same topic back to back like this, but it seems like this is worth paying a little attention to, even if it turns out not to be the answer. I think it's putting us on the road toward an answer. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. And here's the article published the 22nd of February in 2024. So it is brand spanking new. And it's in Nature, which, as I've said many times, is sort of the premier scientific journal. And if you get your article in Nature, you've really made a splash. Which is not to say that every single thing that's published in Nature ends up turning out to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. But it does mean that the article passed some pretty serious peer review before it was published. So you know that we're not talking about things that have a very flimsy basis. So the article is titled, CAR T Therapy for Multiple Sclerosis Enters U.S. Trials for the First Time. Hopes are high that engineered immune cells, which are already in use to treat blood cancer, will halt the progression of a degenerative autoimmune disorder. I just want to stay a moment here on this pretty graphic that they've put, included. And the caption says, an artist's impression of nerve cells showing damage caused by degenerative disease in multiple sclerosis. So all that red stuff, not good. But that's what this new therapy is purporting to take care of. So let's find out more. The first U.S. trials of engineered cells to treat multiple sclerosis have started recruiting volunteers, raising hopes for a new therapeutic option for this devastating neurodegenerative disease and other autoimmune disorders. You remember we said in the last video that MS is not the only condition that might be cured or resolved using this new technology. Physicians already treat blood cancer with the engineered cells, called CART cells, but these living drugs are not yet approved for use in other diseases. We're in uncharted territory here, says James Chung, chief medical officer at Kyverna Therapeutics, a biotechnology firm in Emeryville, California, that is leading the charge to use these cells for multiple sclerosis. 
and under the section called living drugs, CAR T cells are made by harvesting immune cells called T cells from people with diseases. The cells are then edited in a lab. That's interesting, cell editing. That's quite a, quite a subfield, I would imagine. To produce proteins called chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, or CARs, enabling them to take on a target of choice. When CAR T cells are reinfused into the person they came from, they seek out and destroy their target. So you're recycling your own T cells, which is also very nice. You're not having to worry about um, the immune system rejecting a foreign cell from somewhere else, and that, that helps an awful lot. Drug developers first jumped on the CAR T card to find a way. Is that supposed to be a pun? <laughs> I guess it is. To find a way to wipe out immune cells called B cells that grow out of control in blood cancers. Because B cells also contribute to various autoimmune diseases, cell therapies hold potential for treating these conditions too. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease driven by misguided T and B cells, that's a nice way to put it, that attack nerve cells. Neurologists have for decades treated MS with antibodies that target a protein called CD20, a marker of B cells and some of you may be on an anti-CD20 medication. These antibodies kill these cells, keeping the immune system in check. But these therapies, when they work, slow rather than halt the disease. And that's something that Dr. Giovanoni and others have said that is still a problem, that just because you're slowing it down doesn't mean you, if you're anywhere closer to curing it. You're just slowing down the inevitable. But this purports to actually get into the root of the matter and cure the problem. As they say, researchers have therefore turned to CAR T cells, and specifically to those that kill B cells carrying a protein called CD19. CAR T cells are better cell killers than are the antibodies and seem to penetrate into tissues, including the brain, that antibodies can't reach. So, in other words, they can breach the blood-brain barrier. More thorough depletion of these B cells, the theory goes, should reset the malfunctioning immune system, halting the brain damage that defines the disease. Researchers in Germany are already running a small trial of CAR-T therapy for people with MS in collaboration with Kyverna. Kyverna is also partnering with research researchers at Stanford University in California on a U.S. Phase I trial that is recruiting participants. Separately, Bristol Myers Squibb in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, is recruiting people in the United States into a bigger Phase I trial of its CAR T cells. So, yeah, if you're in the, if you're in the area of California or New Jersey, you might look into this because they're actively recruiting right now. And then they talk about immune reset. Neurologists have rebooted the immune system before with promising results in autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation therapy. People with MS receive high-dose chemotherapy to kill off all their immune cells, followed by an infusion of their own stem cells to repopulate their immune system. But the risks and complexity of this therapy make it unattractive to biopharma companies says BMS's head of research, Robert Plenge, and it is not widely available. CAR T cells could offer a simpler way to reset the immune system, says Plenge. And yes, I would agree with that. I, you know, I know that many people have good things to say about the stem cell research and the stem cell transplant and how that works with MS. And I think that it can be really successful, but it is very drastic, and I'm not quite sure that I'd be willing to undergo something quite that drastic, at least not in my stage of life. Maybe if I were younger, <laughs> I would think about it. But yeah, I've watched some different interviews with people who've gone through it, and I think in the end they were happy, but boy, the process was a lot more involved and a lot less comfortable than they had thought. This article goes on to say, 
that these cells might not be up to the task, says Mark Friedman, a neurologist at the University of Ottawa and a pioneer of the stem cell transplantation therapy. Do we get the impression there's a little competition going on here? <laughs> because if you're doing stem cell transplants and you're getting paid big bucks to do that, you're not real thrilled when you see somebody coming along with something that does pretty much the same thing, but much more easily. Whereas chemotherapy can kill off all of a person's T and B cells, CAR T cells wipe out only a subset of the B cells that contribute to the disease, he points out. But if the treatment is safe, he adds, it's worth a try. So much depends on safety. Very true. Every therapy has its risk, and it really depends on the benefits and your tolerance for risk. His biggest concern is brain toxicity, which can cause confusion, seizures, and death, and has been seen when CAR T cells have been used to treat cancer. The brains of people with MS are already inflamed, potentially exacerbating the danger, says Friedman, who consults for BMS but is not involved in the new trial. Jeffrey Dunn, who is running the first trial of Kyverna's CAR T cells in the United States, will be watching closely for brain toxicity, which he says seems to be linked to the number of B cells in circulation. B cells are everywhere in B cell cancers, but less abundant in MS. We're hoping that we see little toxicity, says Dunn, a neurologist at Stanford University in California. And I'm interested to know if they do see the toxicity in an individual, what are they going to do about it? Is it reversible? Does it leave lasting damage? I'd like to know that before I got interested in a clinical trial. Just saying. And then here's a section called New Frontiers. Drug developers are watching these trials and are poised to advance a full pipeline of CAR T therapies that all act in similar ways. Preliminary clinical results already hint at life-changing potential in lupus, attracting a crowd of research teams. See in another article that they have, Enlisting Immune Cells to Treat Autoimmune Disease. MS could become just as competitive, says Dunn, if early data are supportive. And this bar chart is interesting. It's called Enlisting Immune Cells to Treat Autoimmune Disease, and it says that the number of clinical trials of CAR T cells or engineered immune cells used to treat autoimmune disorders has grown rapidly over the past seven years. Testing of CAR T therapy for the autoimmune disorder lupus accounts for the bulk of the trials. And you can see here back in 2017, it looks like the very first clinical trial of this technology for lupus was promising enough that they not only continued the lupus trial, but they added other conditions. And you can see myasthenia gravis was added in 2019. And then there were some other conditions that were added in the intervening years. And then starting in 2024, we now have the clinical trials that will be looking at CAR T cells for multiple sclerosis. And Dunn says, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there's a prospect here for a one-and-done therapy, which is pretty incredible, I'll say. It could be an enormous paradigm shift. You know what? It's not really so much a paradigm shift. I think it's finally maybe taking someone like Professor Giovannoni seriously. He's been saying for a long time now that all this focus on just curbing symptoms or delaying onsets of various phases of MS or delaying the number of years before you need some kind of an assistive device, that's not acceptable. That until we come up with something that can actually stop MS in its tracks and cure it for good, we aren't there. And this technology is suggestive of something that's moving us toward a cure, dare I say. There are also practical challenges ahead. CAR T therapy is gentler than autologous stem cell transplant, as I was saying earlier, but still requires a harsh preconditioning chemotherapy to make room for the bespoke cells. Price is an issue too. The hard to manufacture therapies currently cost up to US 
$500,000, and I am willing to bet you that most insurance companies are not going to be excited about that. But researchers are working on next-generation CAR T-cells that could be easier and cheaper to use, says Chung, and successes in autoimmune diseases are likely to spur on these efforts. We're excited to do these trials and to see where this goes, says Chung. Well, okay, I will share in your excitement, at least for now. Well, I don't know about you, but I guess I feel a little bit hopeful, <laughs> maybe more than a little hopeful, and not even so much for me. I don't know what I would be willing to undergo at this point. It depends. I'm certainly not going to be a beta tester on it because my MS is not new enough or aggressive enough for me to think that the trade-offs might be worth it. It sounds like there's a few bugs they want to work out. Brain toxicity always gets my attention. Not really interested in that. But I just want to see them get this down through the trials, see how it goes. I will certainly be keeping you posted about what we are finding from that because I'm, I'm thinking that what we find is likely to be informative for the future of MS research. I think this takes things in a direction that's long overdue. We're trying to cure MS, and that is what we really, really want. So I'm all for it. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. And until my next video, please do take really good care of yourself. You can see how important that is. You want to be in really good health if you're going to undergo any procedure like stem cell transplants, like CAR T cell therapy. These things require that the body be in pretty robust shape in order to be able to survive because it's not a simple matter of having a slight reaction to a shot. Let's face it. But anyway, keep your general health as strong as you possibly can. And I will see you again in my next video. Music